Now we're going to figure out a different magnetic field. We're going to have a current carrying loop that looks very much like this. It's a circle of current, and it's going to be oriented like this. So we have our current carrying loop. The current is going to be coming out of the board on the top, and the current's going to be going into the board on the bottom. So we have current going in this direction on our loop. So we have a current carrying And we are going to figure out the magnetic field along the axis of this loop. In other words, this has a <coughs> axis that looks like this, and we're going to figure out the magnetic field at point P. The magnetic field at this particular point due to this current carrying one. Okay, we need to use biot savart. Now, the reason we cannot use Ampere's law is because we can't find an Amperian loop that will have this point on it where the magnetic field is going to be constant and the angle is going to be zero or 90 degrees. You just can't find it. So we need to use uh, biot savart. If you recall, it is. DB equals mu naught times I divided by 4 pi times the quantity DS cross unit vector R over R squared. And we need to, we're going to actually start out by figuring out the direction of the magnetic field. So we need to look at pieces. We have DI and DI. We have little current coming out here. We could call it ds as well. S would be the direction of the wire, which is going to be, in this particular case, out of the board. So we need to figure out what is the direction of the magnetic field at that location caused by this little current, di, or this ds, at this spot. Right here. Thumb points in the direction of the current. Figures curl in the direction of the magnetic field. In other words, this little di, this little ds, is creating a magnetic field which is in a circle all the way around it. I'll draw that circle just for fun. That circle is all the way around. I keep going. Okay. I can come back down. And at this particular point, that magnetic field is this way. If we were to pick a point over here, it would be that direction. If we were to pick over here, it would be down. If we were to pick up there, it would be that way. Okay. But at this particular location, it is in that direction. So what is that direction? Yeah. Because our thumb points in the direction of the current. Our fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So it creates a magnetic field, which is a circle around it. And at this particular point, it's going to be 90 degrees to the radius of that circle. Is it always 90 degrees? Ta a tangent line is always 90 degrees on a circle, right? So because this magnetic field is going to be tangent to that circle. So at that particular point, it's going to look like that. Notice, if I were to do this again with DI, this one right here, please figure out, using your right hand, the direction of dB caused by this di. When you figured out the direction, point, please. Good, we're clearly need to go through this. That's okay. So, the current into or out of the board? Into. So I stick my, finger, my thumb in that direction, I curl my fingers. It's going to create a circle like this around this point. At this point, it's going to be at a 90 degree angle to the radius of that circle. 
and it's going to be pointed along the direction of that circle, which tangent to that circle right now is going to be this way. Notice, these are both 180 degrees from one another. So what happens to all the dBs in the y direction? They cancel out. So please point in the direction of the net magnetic field. It's going to be to your right. So the net magnetic field is going to be dB in the x direction, which is going to be equal to dB times the cosine of theta, where this is theta. So our total magnetic field is going to be dB sub x, or all the sum of all those dBs in the x direction. So let's take a look at uh, Bios of Art here. Let's just pull out dS cross R. We've already figured out the direction, so let's just figure out the magnitude of dS cross R. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking out the small piece so that we can use it, understand it before we use that full equation. So ds cross r. If we don't need the direction, we're going to make that ds r times class sine or cosine sine. So it's going to be dr, I'm sorry, ds times r times the sine of theta. Okay. The angle is the angle between ds and r. Well, r is unit vector which points from ds to the point we're talking about. So that is the direction of r. So class, what's the angle between ds and r? 90 degrees. ds is out of the board or into the board, but regardless, because r is in the plane of the board, that angle is going to be 90 degrees. Unit vector class has what value? One. That's why it's the unit vector times the sine of 90. In other words, ds cross unit vector r actually works out to just be ds because the sine of 90 is just 1. So let's come back to Biot Savart. We have db equals mu naught i over 4 pi. Now, rather than ds cross r, we just have ds. And rather than r squared, now, r is going to be this, little r. But we're going to define big R as the radius of our circle, and we're going to define x as the distance from the center of the circle to point p along the axis. In other words, what is our uh, little r squared equal to winter? Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can tell that that's equal to big R squared plus x squared. So now we need db in the x direction. Well, we can substitute db into that. So db in the x direction. Eventually, we're going to take the integral. We're not there yet. It's going to be equal to db, which is this giant thing, mu naught i over 4 pi times ds all over r squared plus x squared multiplied by the cosine of theta. All right, bless you. We're stuck with cosine theta. Well, let's come back to our picture. If this is theta, this is 90 degrees, I'm going to call this one, uh, we'll go, this is 90 minus theta. Everybody agree? This is a 90 degree angle. So that is theta. So then the cosine of theta, which equals adjacent over hypotenuse, the adjacent is big R. The hypotenuse is the square root of R squared plus X squared. So we can substitute in. Last brown marker. I have to go green after this. db in the x direction equals then mu naught i over 4 pi 
times ds over big R squared plus x squared times a cosine of theta, which we know is equal to big R divided by the square root of R squared plus x squared. So db in the x direction equals, let's just multiply through here, mu naught i times r times ds divided by 4 pi uh, r squared plus x squared multiplied by the square root of r squared plus x squared is equal to, Nick? r squared plus x squared to the 3 r squared plus x squared to the 3 halves power. We need to take the integral now of the whole thing. We are taking the closed loop integral because this is a full loop. We're going to take the closed loop integral and we're going to get Bx, which is going to be the total magnetic field. It's going to be equal to the integral of mu naught i times big R all over 4 pi times r squared plus x squared to the 3 halves power times ds. My last brown marker is not going to make it to the end of the hour. What can we take out from underneath the integral? What are constants for this integral? <coughs> Match. Uh, let's say big R is constant. True. Uh, X is constant. X is constant, I agree. Okay, so at point P, is it just like, it's just staying there, right? That point P, well, remember what we're doing is we're actually taking it for all of DI, so it doesn't matter where point P is, that point P will be at the same location no matter which DI we take. So what we're talking about is which, will it, will these things change depending on which DI or DS we're taking for that whole circle. Okay, and then uh, 4 pi. Right, it's just constant. So is everything constant except for current? Actually, current is going to be the same on the whole wire, isn't it? Right, because it's just one loop and the current's going through that, so the current's going to be constant. So everything's constant. So everything's constant. So we have mu naught i times r, big R, divided by 4 pi times r squared plus x squared to the 3 halves power, closed loop integral ds. What then is the closed loop integral of d? S. I agree. And what's its value? Oh, green. I can't see it. Say I agree it's S, but rather than write that down, what what else can we put that in terms of? S. The arc length of the loop, right? Which is? He's not seeing it. Help him out, uh, Loki. Um, R times theta. Actually, well, it is S equals R times theta, but I'm looking for specifically, Nick. It's just the, the circumference of the circle. The theta would be 2 pi there. So it's going to be 2 pi times big R. So let's see. Some things cancel out. Uh, we pi cancels out. We lose a 2. And we lose, oh, we get an R squared. We gain an R squared. So we get the magnetic field total is equal to mu naught times the current times big R squared divided by 2 times the quantity R squared plus X squared to the 3 halves power. And we already figured out the direction of this. It is in the I direction. There you go. That is the magnetic field at location P, x distance along the axis. Yes? Ah, I will do my best. <laughs> I'll try blue, how's that? We'll, we'll see how it's gonna work out. All right, <laughs> sorry. So what we end up with is, notice that if x equals zero, then we get, Good. The magnetic field total is equal to mu naught i times r squared over 2 times r squared to the 3 halves power. r squared to the 3 halves power is r cubed, so this works out to be mu naught i divided by 2r, if we're talking about at the center of the circle. 
we actually already figured out the magnetic field that exists at the center of a circle. And that was its value. We just figured it out again. You know, why not? <laughs>